Welcome back to the class, everyone. It has now been about a full week since we got the infamous light speed bundles. And while they themselves are really great, it leaves a little bit of wonder out there. What's coming next? <laughs> So today we are joined by none other than the Nooch himself to talk about this topic because Nooch, as many of you may know, has a really great audience and a big part of that audience are people who are in the mid game typically already missing a lot of Galactic Legends. So Nooch, how are you doing today? It's great to see you, Calvin. I'm doing great, man. I'm glad we, it's been, it was funny when, when I looked up or we looked at, it, it's been over a year since we talked and I think yours is one of my first collabs in this the sound was anyway it's good to see you it's good to be back <laughs> with you buddy yeah it's good to be back here if i remember correctly the last time we got together we talked about phoenix and i don't i don't think crex was anywhere near in anyone's imagination at the time so it has been it has been a minute yeah we thought uh, we thought that rex was blowing up the game in a big way right uh little did we know what was coming <laughs> down the road oh yeah oh yeah uh, so yeah, as previously mentioned in our intro, the Lightspeed Bundles, they've come, they've changed the game forever. I guess just in a quick summary, what's your opinion? And obviously, you've ha had and you haven't had a range of accounts in various different places. What is your overall take on them? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you think they could do better? I love it. I, I, I think it's great for the game. I, you know, um, whenever you can make the game more accessible to people, that's really good for the players. Um, whenever they can make money on the game, that's good for the health of the game. You know, I always say people that want to complain about whales, it's like, well, you would not have a game if people weren't whaling. So and, and I think the game's been floating around a long been watching it, you know, six, seven million, six million, seven million for a long time now. And you're talking about a billion dollar game that's used to make it more like 15, 20 million a month. And I I think they're going to hit those right right back up to the top of the heap again with this. But as far as like, I mean. I when I do roster reviews now and I do I do them a lot, I'm seeing 80% of the people that are asking for roster reviews. Oh. Um, and even I'm even seeing like 70 to 80% of the people that just throw their name out there and I pull them out of a hat have this done. Um, the only place that I see it lacking is like in the general community, it seems more like 30% across the board. But yeah, everybody's buying this thing, man. Okay. Everybody. Yeah, from a value perspective, we ran the math on it when they very first came out, and it's not even comparable. It, it's yeah. not like two or three or four or five times better than any other deal out there. It's up somewhere between 100 and 150 times. It, it completely blows everything out of the water. And one of the interesting things with that is, and I, th I think you kind of hit the nail on the head, that it makes things a lot more accessible for the game at wide. And I, I do think CG is going to make money on this in the long term. Not not even just like the 10 or 20 or $30 people spent, but yeah. this ends up creating other bottlenecks al along the way. And with that, it also catches them up to the very tip of the spear where things end up do becoming more expensive. And if they develop a, a habit of spending, that can kind of be added to things as well. So if they're to continue with this, is there a way, I guess this is my next question, is there a way they can do this and make it sustainable? Can they that just keep is, offering Galactic Legends for ten dollars or twenty? Yeah, that's the 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 hundred the million dollar question, right? And you're right that you know everybody everybody that farms this now has a Zeta bo a bottleneck, yeah, um, Omicron bottleneck, mods, all that stuff. Like it's it's you now you're gonna be grinding that stuff for probably six months for most people. Uh, first order ships and a lot of people may may fork out. And I I I saw a guy today that bought the finalizer. You know, I'm like, you don't have the finalizer. I'm like. Because his ships are all three, four stars, but he had a five star finalizer. So people are going to be doing that. Um, but yeah, can they keep doing it? Man, that's the question, right? I I would hope they don't do it more than every six months if they're going to. I know that Arnold found those that we've seen the geo packs that might be coming out. And yeah. maybe they do stuff like that where in between they say, okay, here you can buy uh, five relic geos for 10 bucks. I mean, you know, maybe they do stuff like that. And that makes sense. And you might even do that if you've got a bunch of gear 12 geos, right? Like 10 bucks to take your geos from to from gear 12 to relic. Uh, when you're in the mid game, when you're in the early mid game, that's really valuable. I mean, late game, I know the geos are really aren't there, maybe as cleanup and stuff. But um, 
or is the fleet. But if they start, can start doing stuff like that, maybe once a month they have, um, maybe they have, here's your Phoenix. Get get the rest of your Phoenix to relic levels without having to invest in them. Get your, who knows? Who It, it could be any number of things. And then eventually they pop again and they give you a Sith Eternal for 10 bucks and gas for 10 bucks or, or 20 bucks, whatever it is. Yeah. I think they should continue, but it's got to, they've got to put some distance between it because we're already, uh, I did uh, one, I've got a free to play account or two free to play accounts. And I'm also carrying like a whaling account that I'm starting to spend on a hundred bucks a week. And on that account, it's like, I bought these packs and I've got months of farming ahead of me just to complete, you know, Ray and Kylo and Starkiller before I don't need some other giant pack to come out in the next two to three months. So you kind of, and it, not not to say intentionally, but you kind of danced around the fact a lot of the characters that you mentioned, like C, Geo's, Phoenix, these are all really old teams for the most part. And I realize Krex is coming and lifted them up and they, they've all had kind of little tinkerings here and there. But the one thing that I guess makes me a little bit weary and or scares me, I, I am definitely a fan of spreading them out, as you've said, but I also, I, I don't know how close they can get to new content. Because for me, it, it almost need the, the thing almost needs to be like three years old. Because what what they can't do is if the character is so new, like J Jabba is probably a pretty good example. Leia is obviously brand new, but Jabba like there's still a ton of people grinding for him right now. And if they were to, as soon as all those people get done, they're like, all right, cough up 20, 30 bucks. You can be at the same place as the guy who grinded for a year. Like, what's your what's your take on that? Or I guess, um, what is the timeline that you would be comfortable with? for accounts that you have or the people that are watching your videos where that should land that's really hard to answer <laughs> you know it's like I, I i i think if you ask me that three months from now i could probably give you a solid answer it's just hard to say right now right like how long is it going to take me to get the 12 zetas i need for ray and kylo and the three for star killer and the, and the three omicrons and the omicron for darth uh, talent you know how long is all this stuff going to take and and all the gear as well and then be, be comfortable to say okay now i need to step back for like three months and, and catch my breath and upgrade a couple other teams i did i left i i left along the way i think it's a great question i do think while you were saying that i i kind of thought of the fact that with the java and leia they changed the cadence you know it was two gls every year for three years yeah. and then year four it was one gl java and then year five I don't know if I'm getting the years right exactly, but you know, you had the Kylo Ray, then you had Luke and Sith Eternal, then you had uh Lord Vader and Kenobi, then yep. Jabba by himself, and then Leia by herself. So if they start spreading out these once a year Galactic Legends, or God knows, maybe they come up with something new that we don't even know is gonna happen. Um, then maybe you give your, they give yourself some breathing room. But I could I I can definitely I, Sith Eternal is the one I can definitely see. I don't know if I see a Jedi Master Luke. You know, Jedi Master Luke, Jabba, and Leia are so close together as far as their farming paths. Oh, yeah, that, that's a good point. Yeah, if you give me one of those, you pretty much, maybe Jabba, not as much. Jabba's Jedi, Jedi Knight Luke, and then and Han, but the rest of it is all bounty hunters and stuff. But, man, Luke and Leia and the profundity, it's like this giant interlocked web of, of farming. Well, and what it pretty much does, and I'm not even saying this is entirely bad, and maybe they can get away with it with this type of mentality, but when they would do, like, like let's say they do a Jedi Knight Luke pack, which obviously has huge crossover for the three Galactic Legends, JML, Jabba, as well as Leia, but at, what it would pretty much do is it would turn the Leia and Jabba farms into essentially buy these packs for 20 or 30 bucks or whatever, and then do the same amount of work that you would do to take Afra. Because at that point, for those two Galactic Legends, you're missing the three or four new marquees that are all not accelerated. They're all really heavy on Cairo and whatnot, which will be the same as going after Afra or Starkiller when they first came out. And that's essentially what they would be. And I don't, there, there's probably still a lot of money in that because that's almost seems can be uh, to what they did with Leia recently. Most of Leia's requirements outside of the marquees are cupcakes. Like, they're either characters yeah. you probably would have done for another character. The character is already good itself, like CLS, or just isn't that high of a relic level, like Wicket and Chirp at R3. I mean, I agree with that a lot of people, you know, you had people had their Ewoks at gear level, some people even at gear 12 and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to be able to predict the future. I, th I think the biggest, I, I think that Capital Games it might even be in a wait and see mode. Like, hey, 
let's drop a bomb and then let's wait and see how the dust settles, right? Like, can we do this in three months? Can we do this in six months? Do we wait till May the 4th? Do we do it once a year? Do we do the do we do the same packs on May the 4th? Do we do a we do a new pack? Do we do like a Sith Eternal and gas kind of combo, you know, next year? I think they might. I, I'm not sure I can. I, I'm not sure I can. I can think of a way that that Capital Games could look at this and say, "Okay, if we do this, here's exactly what's going to happen." And and this might be just some kind of giant experiment from them to see, "Hey, we're about to release Relic Ten. Let's go get that done," which I think is just obviously going to happen. Um, so let's let's drop a big thing out there and see if we can get a bunch of people to buy it and get our income up and. Uh, and then we'll see what we do in the future. I, I can't imagine they knew exactly the ramifications of it. Oh, I would uh, I would 100 percent agree with that. And I think there's even been some like comments from from Meathead we found that a lot of this is based off of experimentation. One, one of the I, to me, it's a clear sign is the fact that they did the uh, Kylo and Ray uh, packs differently where they didn't include finalizer, whereas they did specifically include with Radis. So I think they're really aiming to see a what are the needs? What do people actually need? And then B, what are they willing to pay for it? Because I'm guessing there's a group of people, and I don't know what how deep their data analytics go, but there's a group of people out there who looked at the Kylo stuff and said, well, I really can't get finalizer immediately, so I'm just not going to do the pack. And I, or, I don't know how big that group is. The group is probably really small, but I think that data is important to CG so that they can know yeah. what to do going forward, whether or not they need to release uh, several packs that get you full completion to the Galactic Legend, very similar to Ray, or if they only want to do partial things. Well, if you look at that, you know, for however many years now, ever since Kylo came out, we've all said, he's your number one Galactic Legend. Go get him. You know, with some variants, but it was like, hey, here's Kylo. He does all the raids. He's the best bang for your buck. If you're going to go get your first Galactic Legend, get Kylo, then you can get our stuff. So I think maybe part of that was... Here's a $10 pack. We'll call it the BB-8 pack, but it's really the, the SOKR pack. Um, because maybe, you know, a, a giant, a much larger, and well, this is true. A much larger percentage of players had Spring their Kylo Ren, you know, than had Ray. And 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 when we're when I'm looking at rosters every week, almost nobody farms Ray anymore. You know, yeah. her farm is so um uh self-contained. You know, even Kylo's farm with the bounty hunter ships it rolls over to an executor real easily. Mm -hmm. But Ray is like nothing rolls over you anywhere except Jedi Ray and Jedi Master Luke, yeah. but that's just one of his requirements. And then and the Houndstooth and everything else is only Ray. You know, so nobody really farmed her, and she kind of became just like this poo pooed on Galactic Legend. So hey, I, I guess they found out that they can charge forty bucks for Ray. And the whole world will buy it. So, it, which which is really what happened. So maybe they put that going. Maybe maybe they bring in a finalizer pack in in three months. You yeah. know, that I mean that'd be genius, right? Oh, kind of genius. Maybe people get mad because they've been farming those ships the whole time by then. But you know, you bring in a finalizer pack to build on that too. Um, I, man, it would be nice I, to have solid answers. I do. Uh, and I'm sorry if, if I'm talking much. Just cut me off, but. I do know this for free to play players right now. It's it's tough. It is tough. I took in. I have an account. I'm I'm rushing. Uh, I'm rushing for a job. I just see how what it's like free to play to get Job of the Hut since all the changes back in May. And I went to Grand Arena today, and the guy I was playing against had bought the packs, and he threw them on the front line. And it's like they didn't have any mods, but it's still Relic Five characters, oh, and I got yeah. like I mean... you know, year nine and ten Imperial Troopers. I almost beat him actually. If you go watch the the stream, it was awesome. But um, yeah, it, the it, and Fleet Arena is completely blown up. You know, you people that bought that Radis pack, if you're in a new Fleet Arena or a Fleet new Fleet shard, it's gone. You can't get there free to play anymore. You're you're done. And it it'll flush out if they don't release another pack. So it it's really upended the game for free to play for the time being. And and it, the game ebbs and flows. So we'll have to see how long term how that shakes out for the free to play players. Yeah, it does add an interesting element because it's it's a in this way, I think it's pretty similar to the hyperdrive bundle, where if you don't immediate like when it's fresh out, if you don't immediately go after it, there is a huge distinction between you and the player that does. Um so I think that's probably worth mentioning. But yeah, I I do I, I do see what you're saying. But uh, just because we're running a little on time, would you be okay 
with say like just summarizing we're very much for the light speed bundles but i think time as well as um distance between them as well as time of the characters coming are two really important things that if cg would be watching this video right now they need to take into consideration i think 100 percent. and I, I don't know if you'll see a finalizer but I, everything you said is right you know the time and i wouldn't be shocked if we start seeing like zeta bundles and omicron oh, bundles yeah. and oh, oh heck omega bundles nobody's gonna have enough omega. we don't have enough omega. mod bundles all that stuff maybe you see some giant ones those coming out 10 15 20 bucks in the near future oh the, the zeta ones a thousand percent i i think we both talked about this where people most people had a, a system built into place every time they farm a character they get a zeta and now all of a sudden they need 12 and they they don't have it and they don't have a, a place to get it outside of their normal means so yeah, yeah. definitely definitely something that i think we'll be seeing but Nooch, before we do go would you like to tell everyone where they can find you, what you're all about, what you got going on? Sure, man. Hey, just uh, look up Nooch Too Good on YouTube. Um, you know, uh, you may have seen the, some of the shorts I published. That's really kind of what's brought the channel to the forefront is bringing out shorts every day um, through the game. But we really focus the channel on new early mid gamers. I got a bunch of beginners guides out there, which the game actually, believe it or not, there's not there were not a lot of beginners guides out there. And so I kind of found that as a niche. So uh, the, a big part of my audience is those new early beginning mid mid to late gamers. We're starting to branch out into doing a little whaling on the channel. So we're starting to, to even move forward there. But yeah, Nooch too good. You could probably do a little Star Wars dad search and find me as well. But uh, hey, it's good to see you today, Cal. We got to get together again. Yeah, no, it was, great. it was great having you on. We do need to do more stuff, both both on my channel as well as yours. And for those of you who want, you can also just take down in the description. We'll have Nooch's channel linked in there. But until the next time, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, stay awesome.